I'm gonna give y'all the reason, real underlining reasons, reasons why they come so hard against polygyny, why they come so hard against biblical marriage. It's because number one, they don't want a man in this in this feminist society uh, to be a king in his own castle or in his own household. And they don't want a man to build a legacy and a name for his children, children. He's been one, he has one for himself or his children, children. And they don't want the security that they know that will come from it. They don't want it. Neither do they want it politically because after all, if you actually preach and teach the biblical lifestyle and form of marriage, um, within about 40 years, you could take over a whole township and they don't want that. They don't want that. Hey guys, before we continue, I found that 84% of you who watch these videos are not subscribed. Watch click that subscribe button to support and truth and click the like button to keep these videos populated within the YouTube algorithm. Thank you for your support and truth. Let's get back to it. First problem, the church or y'all. That was your first line problem. Why? Because the Satan used Eve first. She was deceived first. And the order still hadn't changed. Now, this was Pastor Dow roughly about 20 plus years ago. At this time, he only had one wife. As you'll later see that he called her out during the service. Now, he's on record stating that he used to believe in monogamous marriage but let's continue what you have to do is set the perimeters and boundaries and then that's where to sit and then you stand on that i'll give an example since i'm always on blast some of the time we like any other family husband and wife my wife want a home years and years ago and she would drag me around all these homes because i'd be sitting there looking like some you look Oh, let me see. I wish I had Kenley here tonight. I'd be dragging around. Dog. So she'd go and with these realtors and I'm sitting up here. You know how you act when you're at a place you don't want to be, right? You're like this. And she's going around kicking closet doors, opening them up, looking at them. I said, you think you looked at this building, huh? Of course, she can feel my spirit. As you ain't looked at this building, as you want to know what this building is about, let's crawl up under this thing. Hmm? Let me get a stud finder to see what these walls are really built on. So we get finished looking at the house. I said, I ain't buying it. Somebody said, Well, what'd you go for? Just so I could tell I wasn't going to buy it. And I didn't buy it either. And I wasn't planning on buying it. And I ain't never planning on buying it. Why? Because I said so. Uh-oh. That's just the way it is. See, I said perimeter. If I chose that we was going to live in a trailer, that's what we were going to do. And if you don't like it, buy Vesti. I'll get somebody who's better than you. Because I read the book and I believe the book. She believed the book too. She did. She's still there. And that's what I mean by setting perimeters. Because wife, she'll go get the nice two-story house. With plenty of room. Big yard. And then you got to be out there and be a servant to the lender as well as her. And then the, phone, the, then the home is dysfunctional. You never see your children. The only time you see them, when you wake them up to cart them off for somebody else to, to care for them, and you call yourself raising them. And this is the truth Pastor Dow does teach, which must be appreciated. I'm not here to beat up on the man. I got a lot of respect for Pastor Dow. Uh, uh, such a respect that I don't have for Pastor Geno Jennings. 
Okay, this man is ex-military and he's not naive to the wickedness of men. You know, your politicians who uphold Egypt by instituting the prison industrial complex, the medical industrial complex, health and family services, DCFS, etc. To do what? To make your children a ward of the state. Okay. It's a generational curse that not only dates back to Deuteronomy 28, but also in 1 Samuel chapter 8, when God told Samuel, the children of Israel have not rejected Samuel, but they rejected God so that he will not reign over them. Instead, they wanted a king to reign over them. So when I first read, First Samuel chapter 8, I thought the Lord was referring to King Saul, but King Saul was only a vapor. Okay, he appeared for a little while and then vanished away. God does not only speak in terms of individuals. He speaks in generations. So First Samuel chapter 8 is in reference to the dominion that this modern day wicked government has over the family, particularly the women and children, at the expense of the man. You see them in the evening time, just enough to eat dinner and go to bed. But for eight hours, you're away from them. So eight hours, you're away from them, and then you get eight hours of sleep. That's 16, isn't it? And then you're using the other eight hours, an hour for lunch. And the rest of it going to and fro. So when you look at it, look how much life you done missed because you would not do it y'all's way. Because you learned the way of the heathen. Then we wonder why our homes are dysfunctional. We wonder why our children are out of control. Because the home is not in order. And like I said on the broadcast on Blog Talk Radio, I said all you people are complaining about debt. You're complaining about all the things of this world. I said I know how to remove that complaint real quick. Live like the Amish. You don't have to ever worry about meeting a light bill, phone bill, car note, car insurance, mortgage, clothing. You never have to worry all your cares of this world are answered. Well, I don't want to do that. Then shut up. See, we don't like reality checks. We really, truly don't. I'm talking about right now, just for a second, perimeters. Because the lust of the eye is what get people in trouble. Now, it's interesting that Pastor Dow said this when years later, after he uh, made this sermon, the lust of the eye caused him to fall into temptation. And Pastor Dow boasts a lot about how the Most High has blessed the work of his hands. But he fails to express the ways in which hard work is also a curse. Because Adam gained that knowledge from the tree of good and evil. And from that time, men could not see God after Adam fell. So when we work hard, the reward is temptation. It's a sacrifice against our spiritual. Work is a part of the man's identity, but it's also a curse because us men have more sex after work, traditionally. Okay? Although sex is far more a part of the woman's identity, especially in this modern-day mystery Babylonian dispensation, which is why Pastor Dow over the years, changed his position on divorce and remarriage. Which is also why 1 Peter 5, 3 says, Do not lord over the sheep. As the congregation increased, I believe, Pastor Dow lusted after the women and strong drink as a reward for his hard work. I'll go back to the structure of the church. Who's the first line problem? The church or y'all? That was your first line problem. Why? Because the Satan 
You was deceived first. She was deceived first. And the order still hadn't changed. And to this day, there is a penalty we all pay for the wickedness of the woman. This includes refraining from multiple wives. You must understand that initially the serpent defiled Eve, deceiving her to sin against her own body. Remember, the scriptures say he who commits fornication sins against his own body. That's why Eve was cursed in that area of her body. Now, if you fast forward 6,000 years later, the man and woman are ever more corrupt vessels than when many women were virgins prior to marriage under the law of Moses. Okay, you got to mix in these scriptures with their teaching. This is the reason why men cannot have multiple wives today. Then you got to also include how during those days, Edomites were not mixing seed with Judah. Okay, no Edomite had put his seed into our women to defile them or our foremothers, like what was done to them in slavery. So you cannot dismiss all of these variables and then just justify having multiple wives. The bloodlines are cursed. And when you're having sex, you're mixing fluids, blood. Um, so they have to do, they have to come up with fabricated lies and, and, and methods of condemnation to try to condemn them. Because you think about it. Think about what would Pastor Dow be at today if my father had reared and raised me in these scriptures. And by the time I got married at 19 years old, and probably by now, probably would have had 10 wives. Somewhere along in that, maybe 10 wives and eight concubines, something like that. Could you imagine the type of powerhouse of an empire I would have been able to build? Now, for those who see this video, including Pastor Dow, if you see this, do you really think things were going to remain the same after they crucified our Lord? Okay, the shedding of the blood of Jesus, which is a new blood covenant. What is the penalty that mankind would have to suffer when the Israelites intermarried with the pagan nations? You got to remember that was another commandment that the children of Israel disobeyed the Most High. So are you just going to say that that went unpunished throughout the generations? And what about when Esau, again, spread his seed into our women during slavery? And ultimately, when the fallen angels committed the greatest sin against the Most High by going into the daughters of men. Okay, according to Pastor Dow, there is no penalty, no revisions. He doesn't even touch those scriptures. Well, you may say, well, Abraham and David did so after the sin of the fallen angels. No, God tolerated it as a means of men being fruitful and multiplying like God had commanded them. But this was while the law of Moses accounted for forgiveness of sins. This included a system for housing women while they were defiled during their impurity. Okay, obviously, men and women got stoned to death if they committed adultery. It was all about holiness, you see. But we can't keep those laws anymore. So, since Christ was the perfect sacrifice, multiple wives, and the former remedy for keeping them holy, that has been done away with. Because they can't remain holy under that covenant. Because you have to keep the whole law. You got to remember, part of that law, again, was Elomites, the leprosy, was not permitted in the camp. That's how strict that law was. It's unkeepable, if that's a word. Okay, and you got to remember, in the New Testament, God called this an adulterous generation who have the, the great falling away, okay, more and more people in general, let alone women, are unbelievers than they were under the law, even under the law of Moses. 
even during the time of David and his tenure as king. Okay, there are more people who have fallen away and turned, as the scriptures say, have turned the grace of our God into lasciviousness. Okay, under the law of Moses, even the concubines were accounted for. Okay, and Pastor Dow, you indicated that today you may be taking on multiple concubines in addition to your three wives. So this means now the single women in the church are not off limits according to the way you see things in building an empire. I don't know if you noticed he said that the build, he wants to build an empire. Okay, 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 9 says, The time is short. From, from now on, okay, I highlight that. From now on, those who have wives, not he who has wives, those, plural, who have wives, plural, should be as though they have none. Now, this is a revision to polygyny in the old covenant. Okay, and the Most High already commanded us not to be unequally yoked with unbelievers. So he knew it would be incredibly difficult to find a righteous woman because of those generational transgressions that I mentioned. And this was also done to prevent man from blaming God again, like Adam did, uh, for, for, for the wives and their, their unwillingness to be submissive so that man would not compromise his faith like King Solomon did for the woman. Okay, there's a mystery to demon possession. Demon possession has always manifested through the mixing of the bloodlines, Pastor Dow. So once upon a time, the bloodlines were pure enough to warrant incest. We're not doing that anymore. <laughs> of course, at least it's not biblical. And I'm sure you would even agree to that. Again, the key words in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 9 is from now on, meaning we've done, done away with the old, old. meaning it's, it's to be different than before. Also, going back to uh, earlier in chapter 7, 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 2, the key words is because of fornication. You see that? Because of fornication, and it continues, let every man have his own wife and every woman her own husband. Another way of phrasing that is because the Gentiles and the fallen angels tainted the bloodlines. Because of fornication, okay, and so on. So, Pastor Dow, you have taught that the fallen angels made it with the women. Okay, at least you do believe in that, un unlike Pastor Gino. The, the Pastor Gino doesn't realize that that's the reason why <laughs> you argue, according to the scriptures, that we cannot have multiple wives. So, but Pastor Dow, you should understand that as well, that that's the trade-off for men having multiple wives under the law of Moses. The trade-off is that men and women would be stoned to death if found in bed with a man's wife or a woman's husband. That was the trade-off. Because that law was so strict, now, to keep the bloodlines holy, God is saying, okay, you can have multiple wives, but you know what? Because of that sin that Eve committed, the woman can't be in the camp for one, one week when she's on her impurity. They had a system for putting her away for one week. She couldn't touch anything in the camp, anything like that. It's impossible to keep that law today. This is why you can't have multiple wives. 
But the trade off was if they disobeyed because demon possession, that's the way they cast out demons in the Old Testament under the law of Moses. They had to kill the person, as the scriptures say, so that this evil will be put out from among you. You see that. Why? Deuteronomy 22, 22, again, <laughs> says, so that this evil will be purged from among you. That was how they cast the demon out prior to the name of Jesus. Christ coming to give us the keys to the kingdom. That he said, whatever you bind on earth would be bound in heaven. And loosed on earth, loosed in heaven. So the Old Testament is a shadow of the new. But back then, the demon was able to possess men and women because they exchanged bodily fluids. The, the spirits had got access to the blood of men. That, that's what was done to Eve in the Garden of Eden, the serpent. That's why God cursed her body. He who commits fornication sins against their own body. God cursed her body so that that blood can flow out. That, but now that blood was going to have to come out of her periodically. You see that? that because there was an impurity that had entered her. I don't have time to get into that. And by them being in the camp defiled under the law of Moses, uh, they can't touch anything, or they can't touch anyone in the camp. Otherwise, they become defiled. This is why the Levitical priesthood was commanded by God to wear their garments in a certain way. Okay, it, when they were in the tabernacle, they could die for something simple as lighting a candle in the wrong attire. So you see how deep the rabbit hole goes under the law of Moses. So, Pastor Dow, you cannot complain. It's, it's a contradiction. You can't complain about how wicked the women are today and you yourself become defiled by marrying three women. You have to break down exactly how did we get to this point. Okay? You subject yourself to the entire law if you die in your sins. Lastly, Matthew chapter 24, verse 22, it says, if those days were not shortened, no flesh would be saved. This is partially because God will destroy the earth before a new generational curse emerges unlike no other. What do you mean by that, David? If there's a new generational curse that will come upon the earth to where God's going to have to destroy the earth. The book of Revelation, chapter 20, I believe, says that the earth would have become corrupted at that point. So God has to destroy the earth, meaning there's no marriage. That's unlike any generational curse. No man and woman will be able to be intimate at that point because the entire earth is cursed. And before it gets to that way, God has to destroy the earth. You see that. But that's a whole other video I have to discuss.